We were going to look at Revelation chapter 2. And about halfway through worship, I was at John chapter 5. I mean, John chapter 15. And then just now, it's James chapter 1. <laughs> Who knows? It's, it's going to be good. Amen. Yay, God. James chapter 1. Open your Bibles. James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. And let's see what the Word of God has to say. Well, I tell you, he's, he's been cranking on me. It's all good, though. It's all good when the Lord works in your heart and your life. Obvious signs that you're the real deal. Everybody with me? Obvious signs that we are the real deal. I want to be the real deal. How about you? I want to be the real deal. Because the enemy is good at cloaking things and camouflaging things and twisting things. And, and, and you know, um, any... any <laughs> Let's see. Law enforcement and, and lawyers will tell you that eyewitnesses are unreliable. They really are. Uh, because, uh, you know, three people can see the same thing and see it three different ways. But it's from your perspective, from your point of view, from where you stand where you, you know, but the scripture is true. Okay. And uh, let's look at this passage of scripture and, and don't be afraid because it's all, it's all good. Cause I know if you're familiar with the scripture, you say, Oh my goodness, he's going to rip the hide right off of us. No, no, we're not. No, we're not. If, it, if there's any hide ripping, it will all bleed together. Amen. Amen. Now, look what the Word says, James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, if anyone among you thinks he's religious. Now, let me say something about religious. When we say that word today, we don't mean what the Bible means. We think religion is something that, uh, you know, it's a system. It's a... Uh, it's a, it's a laundry list. Well, I got to do these and I can't do, you know. No, religion in, in a scriptural sense is, it, from a Christian perspective, is the embracing, knowing, loving, serving Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, you know, some people say, you know, well, he's religious. What do you mean by that? Well, he, 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 he goes to church some. Well, the, I guess the devil's religious then. Uh, I mean, really, come on. You, you understand what I mean? But, but religious... In a, in a biblical sense, for a Christian is one who, who, who has embraced, who loves, who, who follows, who serves, who worships, who adores Jesus Christ. Okay? Yeah, I got baptized after I got saved. Yep. Yes, I am in covenant with a local congregation. Uh, yes, yes, I, yes I, 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 I tithe, I witness, I Read my Bible, I pray, I, I try to help people, I try to encourage people, I try to, you know, yeah, 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 you know. But I do all those things because I am saved, not to be saved. Everybody with me? Okay. If anyone among you thinks he's religious, now remember the, the biblical definition, you know, a follower of Jesus, loves Jesus. Now, and he says, and does not bridle his tongue, he deceives his own heart. This one's religion, that kind of practice is useless because it, it, it just 
doesn't carry any weight or any anointing. You know, we can do a lot of things in the eyes of people and say, oh, what a marvelous religious person. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful servant of the Lord. But it's all outward. I'm telling you, the anointing of God, the presence of God makes all the difference. I'm telling you, it's the presence of God and His anointing, His touch, in His purpose, in His plan, in His way. And lining up with Scripture. Amen? This is all introduction. <laughs> Pure and undefiled religion. You notice how he's separating religion? Pure religion. Religion that is not defiled, it's undefiled religion, is this. He says, uh, before God, now he didn't say before man because our ideas are different. Before God and the Father is this. Visit, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. To walk to walk in an upright, godly way. To, to come under the authority of the Word, you know. Uh, our, our, our youngest daughter is getting ready to go off college. I looked her right now and I said, now, you know, you know you're going to have to figure out right now where your boundaries are. Not wait, get over there and, oh, in the end... That's too late. You got to figure out right now before you get in any kind of situation. You you got to determine in your heart right now where the guardrails are. And you keep your little buggy in between the guardrails. Now let me ask you four questions from this text. to help examine just how we're doing in demonstrating a, two, a true walk in Christ. Amen? And I know, I know, you know, and here, here's what we're saying. Well, preacher, I wish I could do better. Well, now we can. I can. There's room for me, improvement in my life. Amen? I mean, I'm made out of the same stuff you are. Scary, isn't it? I made out of the same stuff you are. There are many indicators, but we'll look at some of the ones here James mentions. This is not all of them, but this is some. And this will help you and me. Because I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be reminded because you know I sometimes I just get fed up with junk. Don't you? I just get fed up with pretentious, the pretentious, the arrogant, the proud, the condescending. I get fed up with that. I really do. I don't have to measure up to anything but him. And I, gotta, and I, and I love him, therefore, because I love him and he loves me, I, that enables me to love you. Some of us are easier to love than others at times, but he enables me to love you good, bad, and ugly. Are you with me tonight? Number one, is my tongue under control? Well, the obvious answer is no. I mean, who can tame that sucker? I mean, it's no. There's only one tamer of the tongue, and but it's my tongue. Therefore, I'm responsible for my tongue. You're responsible for your tongue. 
Amen? It says, if any one of you thinks he's religious, practicing genuine faith in Christ, faith, the, the faith of the Bible, and does not bridle his tongue, mm. my goodness gracious. You see, our words reveal the contents of our hearts. I mean, that's, that's what, what's here comes out here. Amen? Now, I don't know about you, but junk can get in here. And the devil is bound and determined to fill us full of junk. That's why we need each other. That's why we need to assemble faithfully. That's why we need to read our Bibles. That's why we need to get involved in a life group, come to Sunday school, do, keep our kids. Listen, the world has our kids way more than God has an opportunity for our kids. We need every moment we can get. I, need, I, 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 I don't need less. I need more. Amen? I need more. You know, what, whatever's in the well comes up in the bucket. Now, I know about Doug Wells. I mean, my, my mother and daddy didn't get city water in their house till all the kids were gone because there wasn't no city water. We had a dug well, hand dug well, with, with rocks that were put by hand in the sides to keep it up, you know. And yeah, I can remember as a kid, buddy, mother saying, run down the well and get a bucket of water. Patty that cake down there and get the old bucket and let the old <laughs> grab the thing, <laughs> crank her up. Up here, pour it in that that. Stainless steel looking thing that she milked in. Got her and Patty caked right back up the hill to the house. Always got good water out of that well. You know why? Because every so often, Dad climbed down in there and clean it out. Got to keep the well clean to have clean water. And that's before filters and chlorine and all that junk they put in there that makes it taste like Clorox. Most people don't know what real water tastes like, especially city people. They've never tasted real water in their life. All they got is whatever comes out of the tap, you know, or this stuff that we get out of the bottle. Yeah, and it's the same thing. They just make you pay more for it. My tongue, is my tongue under control? Not as well as it needs to be. That's everybody's response. Lord, help me. Help what comes out of my mouth glorify you. Help what comes out of my mouth encourages my brothers and sisters in Christ. Help what comes out of my mouth make the lost thirsty for you. Help, oh Lord, what comes out of my mouth Give hope to the, the oppressed, the sick, the diseased. Oh, Lord, I'm here to be your ambassador. That means I'm his mouthpiece. Help me, Lord. Help me to be more like you. You see, none of us are what we can be. Thank God none of us aren't what we used to be. And as you grow and you, you move along and you learn and you, you're stretched and you're, you're you just and God is so good to us and, and, and we praise his name and we just look to him and we say, Lord, help, make me more like you. Help me to say the things that glorify you, that, 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 that help me to stand with your. It doesn't mean you're always peaches and cream and whip topping and, uh, you know, an angel food cake, you know. Uh, it doesn't mean that that's all. Uh, but, but, Lord, season my words with your grace, but help me to stay with truth. Amen? 
So, is my tongue under control? <laughs> Did you hear about the fella who uh, just disgruntled in his marriage and just here, just everything, you know, just got his, he and his wife were just, from his perspective, was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Finally, he comes home one day, or she comes home, and he says, I'm tired. You won't pay me any attention. You, you, uh, you won't look at me. You, you, won't, you won't talk. You won't this. You won't that. I'm, uh, I'm leaving and uh, moving away, and I'm going to. Uh, sorry to tell you, but I want a divorce. And he's involved with her sister. It's over. And she writes him a letter to where she she she, she says. Uh, actually, it was an email. She responds to the email. He says, "Well, I'm sorry to hear that." Uh, and she gave all the reasons. Why she she says I, I still love you and I want to communicate, but you never want to you never want to listen. You just want to talk and you just want to talk about things that are important to you. You never care about what's important to me. And she said, uh, and by the way, I won the Powerball today. <laughs> and. Uh, my attorney says that your letter is enough to exempt you from every cent. And oh, by the way, my sister Carla used to be Carl. <laughs> Do you see how words can just get away? Do you understand? You see how words can just sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. That's not true at all. That's a rhyme. That's some little kitty rhyme from way back when. But that's not true. That is not true. What's in the well comes up out of, in the bucket. What's in the well comes up in the bucket. What do we have in our well? Amen. Uh, number two. James 1, 26 says, but he, he deceives his own heart. This religion is, is, is useless. Then, then I got to ask myself, is there deception surrounding my words? You know how people can spin and, I mean, just watch CNN any day, you know, or NBC or, I mean, I mean, really watch some, no, don't. I tell you, you're better off if you don't watch hardly any news. You know, watch Daystar and TBN and World Harvest Television and Total Christian Television and whatever else is there, RB, whatever it is you got, watch, just fill yourself full of good things. I watch very little news. I watch just enough to, then I feel myself getting mad and I say, well, it's time turned off. Time turned off. But when you're, when, <laughs> when, You know, it's amazing that, that, the, that the White House press secretary's job is to be able to spin and twist and fabricate. That's a nice word for lie. And keep a straight face. There's something wrong with that. I don't care who's in the, in the White House. There's something wrong with that. Deception. Half-truth. 
or completely evade the question and just answer something else or talk about something else. We as God's children, we, you know, and it's all around us everywhere. You know, I mean, my goodness, the advertising, the old bait and switch, you know. Oh, come down here. We got mattresses for $187. Did the best. Blah, 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 and get down there. And there. Well, we just sold out. But I've got this $700 one over here that's just as good. They're better. And that's, you know, deception. I, whenever I say that word, I always think of Leif Hedlund. Deception is so deceiving. You see, if what I am saying does not equal how I'm walking, then this mismatch is the evidence of something that doesn't glorify God. It's, it's just it's hypocrisy, isn't it? Lord, help me. Help me. Because, you see, it's natural for us to be two-faced. That's, that's where the word hypocrisy comes from. It's, you know, I want to be liked by you, and I want to be liked by you, and I want to be liked by you. And so I'll just tell you what you want to hear and tell you what you want to hear and tell you what you want to hear. And we'll all just get along just fine until we all get together. Amen? Lord, help me. Help me. Help me to be the real deal. Help me to be the real deal. Help me, Father. This is the place to invite grace into, into by acknowledging right now, Lord, Lord, I need you. I need you. I don't, you know, why, why do people spin and, and just tell people what they want to hear? It's fear, fear, you know. You know, one, this, all this need to be accepted and liked and appreciated and all that. And we all have it. But you, we forget that we're accepted in Him. We're loved unconditionally. He knows all that yuck about us. And He's forgiven and forgotten. Now, if you start walking in yuck again, get ready to get chastised, disciplined, because He loves us. Amen. But there we are. Help me, Lord. Help me. It's too easy to think because we can spit out the right answers that we have the right heart and attitude. But that's not so. The proof is in the pudding, which leads to the next point. In James 1, 28, the first part, it says, Pure and undefiled religion for God and the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their trouble. I have to ask myself this third question. Is my life touching people, especially in their time of need? You see, that's, why, that's one reason why believers are to covenant together in a local congregation. You know, sooner or later, everybody's going to need help. And we're all to be givers, but there's times that we need to be receivers. I didn't say takers. I said receivers. You see, a taker just takes and they never give. You know, every month I get the same phone call from a couple of people. Can you give me? Can you this? Can you that? Can you this? Can you that? And I think, you must call so many people, so many churches, you, you forget who you talk to. Because I've heard this same song and dance so many times, I can tell it to you. There's a difference between a receiver and a taker. But, Lord, I want to be the real deal, so is my life touching people in their time of need? I mean, an orphan and a widow, you know, those are two of the most vulnerable people out there. I mean, I mean, honestly, I mean, there's some widows that come to this church and I visit them and, and I listen and thank God, thank God for them. And, 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 
But what you and I wouldn't think about, two things about, wouldn't give it a second thought, it's really big for them. You know? I mean, what's raking leaves to you? What's, what's clearing, a, clearing your, your driveway to you? I mean, you understand? What's mowing your grass to you? What is, I've got a, I got clean sheets on the bed and I got food in the fridge. There's orphans on the street don't even have that. Am I, am I available to help people in their time of need? This is evidence of true love and true compassion. Oh, it's easy to get hard, isn't it? I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm all the time, Lord, keep my heart soft because I, 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 I encounter so many takers, so many cons, so many panhandlers that just scam and play the system. Lord, keep my heart soft to when genuine need comes. I'll be open. I will help. You know? God, I, can't, I don't know how many bags of groceries I bought or how many tanks of gas I've filled up. I've lost count over the years. 39 years, bunches. I don't even care to know because I know one day I'll stand to him and he'll tell me how many. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, God. Help me. Help. See, my battle is... To, is, is to stay soft, not to be hardened by the gamer, the scammer, the, the con, the, the player, the person who, who works harder at trying to get something for nothing is, than if they would just really work, they'd find it's a lot easier. Is my life touching people in their need? The ultimate litmus test for true Christians is love. And John talked about that in his first epistle. One John, he says, you know, God is love. If we say we, you know, if, if, if we hate, if we despise, if we detest, you know, a brother, we, we don't know God. I mean, we don't know what, we don't understand what real love is. God, help me to love. Help me to love. Help me, Lord. Jesus saw what was on his Father's heart and responded in like manner, and so should we. The Father so loved us. I mean, he loved us. He knows everything there is to know about Bobby Baker and Kyle White, Virginia Adams and Charlie Schrantz and, and Barbara Puffenberger and Charlene Parker. Everything ever was. And all of us. All of us. And he says, I'm going to let my only son die for your sin. Take your place. I'm, I'm going to demonstrate my love. You're not looking for me, but I'm coming after you. Lord, help me to have that kind of heart. Help me to have that, that kind of love. Because the world's full of people. And whether they know it or not, they're in need. If they don't know Christ, they're, they're experiencing the only heaven they're ever going to experience. This sorry life. In a, this sin-cursed earth. And we're walking around in sin-cursed bodies, getting moments of joy and happiness and success and victory and this and that. But that's only heaven. This is the closest to heaven they're going to get. Aren't you glad for the born again? This is the closest to hell we're getting. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name.
Jesus' daily life has shown us that he was often drawn to those who were overlooked, who didn't measure up, or who were viewed as unacceptable. Lepers. Tax collectors. Crooked government workers. Not all government workers are crooked. Prostitutes. Immoral people. People who were in flagrant violation of God's law. But yet, and he never endorsed, he never enabled, he never condoned, he never said that that's okay. He loved them and brought them to light and truth. And they were transformed and changed. Bless his holy name. Fourth question. James 1, 27, and to keep yourself unspotted from the world, is my life one of purity? Mm. You see, being led by the Holy Spirit means we are led into holiness. I tell you, being a seventh generation Baptist, we didn't like that word. Because <laughs> there's a group of people that used that word as a way to attain salvation, and that, that was off the mark. But holiness is still a good word. Holiness is still a good word. Having a pure heart before God, being holy as God is holy, certainly means that what is in His heart begins to be expressed in our heart. Because I don't have any holiness Unless I get it from him. This is the core of Christian living. Christ living through his spirit in our lives. Is my life one of purity? Is it one that... Uh, that uh, now, I didn't say sinless because I know that's not the case. But the antenna of my heart. You know, I don't get up. I don't, I don't wake up in the morning and say, well, I wonder how close I can get to sin and not sin today. Or I wonder if I could just haul off and sin and nobody know it but me. And, of course, God. wonder if I get this by Christy. I wonder, I, want, I wonder if I could, I never think that way. I like living. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that way. I don't think that way. I get up and I think, Lord, use me today. Help me, Lord. Best I can do is an F minus. But with you, I'm A plus. Do you remember the story of Joseph? You know, his brothers were jealous of him. He was daddy's favorite. And uh, he was just daddy's favorite. And that's a whole other story in itself. How, how could there really be a whole lot of tranquility when there's four mother-in-laws involved? Four wives, you know, four children, before, all under the same. Oh, Lord. But he was the favorite. And he kind of petted him a little bit and dressed him better and gave him, you know, and made the, old, uh, the, the older boys, they, 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 buddy, they was out there uh, working just like the servants. And he was in the cool of the tent, eating the best food, wearing the best clothes. Go out and check on them, them brothers of yours. He goes out, and, and they just seething with hate and disgust and jealousy and envy because he was daddy's favorite. And they wanted to, some of them wanted to kill him. But one of his brothers said, no, 
Let's just put him down this pit. We'll figure out something. And then here come daddy's descendants of daddy's indiscretion, Ishmaelites. You know, remember Hagar and Abraham's first boy? Well, here come some distant cousins still causing the house of Israel trouble today because they're almost all Muslim today. He said, hey, let's make a little pocket money. Let's sell him into slavery. They're going down to Egypt. He go, and what did he do? He obeyed daddy. You know, he didn't choose which womb he'd be ushered out of. He didn't choose any of that. And here he is. I'm obeying daddy. I'm the benefit of daddy's favor. But that's daddy's favor. That's not me. I'm obeying daddy, going down. And now here I am in slavery. I'm a slave. I used to be the favored son of the richest man in Israel, and now I'm a slave. God gives him favor. You know, old Potiphar. And here he is. And, and Mrs. Potiphar, Henri Heffer, she kind of just uh, looked at him in the way that she ought not. And she just burned with lust for him. And, and finally, he just had to, she cornered him and grabbed him, and he ran out of his garment, running straight. Streaking down, the, and she feigns, oh, help, I've been attacked. And he got thrown in prison. Temptation. Oh, she was after him more than once. But he did the right thing. Lord, help me to be a Joseph. Help us all to be a Joseph. Help us all to be a Joseph in our thought life, and in our walk life. Help me to be a Joseph. And he didn't succumb to temptation. And how did God raise him up? He saved his father and all his brothers and all his nephews and nieces and la-da-da-da and brought him down to Egypt. And there in the land of Goshen, they became a mighty, mighty nation. God had a plan. And Joseph didn't succumb. To temptation. And then on the other hand, there's David. Remember David? A man after God's own heart. Yes, I know he had more wives and he had fingers and toes. Wasn't a bright move. Wasn't a bright move. Murderer, adulterer. You, you just feel it out. A not real good father. He let his kids get away with much. His kids manipulated him. He wasn't a good father. I mean, if you want to you go to the Bible and look for the, the pattern of a good father, don't look at David. Because he failed time after time after time. But the reason that David was a man after God's own heart is when he failed, he didn't quit. He got back up and he repented. He confessed and repented and followed after God. Dahavid is David in, in, uh, in Hebrew. Dahavid, it also means beloved. Dahavid, my Dahavid. David, my beloved. Isn't that neat? Do you know there's no other David in the Bible? Only one. Why? Because he was a man after God's own heart. And he failed at so many areas of his life that it makes me think, well, I could be a man after God's own heart. Because I've got more failures than I care to think about. But I can be a man after God's own heart. If, I'm, if I can't identify with Joseph, some of you can. Keep on, Joe. Keep on. Some of us can identify with old Dave. 
Get up, Dave, get up. Amen? So, the world shoves, the world takes. The Christian is to give and to embrace. That's us. Certainly there are many other questions we could ask, but James just gives us the truth that causes us to ask at least four of ourselves. So how are we doing? How are we doing? Remember to let people know you've, you've failed and, and are not in a good place that the Father invites them right now to come to his throne. If you're not in a, right, in a good place, if they're saying, you know, God is speaking, if the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart about attitudes or actions or, uh, or omissions, sometimes I think Christians' greatest sin is the sin of omission, not doing. You know, and in, in this high-tech age, you know, Instead of going and seeing somebody, well, I can just Facebook them. You know, I can, I can twit, twit, twi bird them. Uh, no, no, not that. Twitter them. <laughs> Twitter. That, that's a dangerous word. You got to watch it. Twitter. Tweet them. Tweet. You got, you send them a tweet on Twitter. Help us. Help me. Help me, Lord. They're laughing at me, Jesus. So, dear friends, it's, it's just like this. Is my tongue under control? Is there deception surrounding my words and my walk? Is my life touching people in their need? And is my life one of purity? I want all that to be true in, in my life and yours, more so now than ever. And as the Spirit of God speaks to our hearts, you know, I don't know where, where you're weak or where you have a fault or a flaw, you know. Usually, they're, you know, some, some, some of them are so subtle and hidden that they're hard to see for us, but the Spirit of God can always see. And we can see. We can see ourselves if we say, Lord, show me, show me. And boy, you know, you know, you know. I mean, I can always tell who's not winning souls because they complain to me about me talking about it. I can always tell who's not tithing. They complain whenever I mention it. I, I know who's not faithful to the Lord's house because when I mention it, they complain. They just tell on themselves. I'm not the judge. He is. I'm, I'm just a conveyor of truth. Listen, I'm in the game just like you. Signs that, obvious signs that we're the real deal. I want to help people. I want to walk up right before the Lord. I want him to use me. I want him to use me more than I've ever been used. I'm, listen, contentment and complacency don't work well with me. Because when I get to that place, I always get in trouble. I start... I mean, Lord, thank you for the favor and the blessings, but I can't just say I've arrived. I know I need to be stretched more and more. So, my dear friends, as, as, as Greenway, as, we, as we're coming together, and I tell you, it seems like every service is getting sweeter. God's moving. I tell you, Joey, yay, God. Yay, God, Eddie and, and, uh, and Mitchell. It was sweet tonight. And, 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 and the services and, and, uh, and people are just starting to, listen, pruning's never fun. But after pruning comes harvest. Hey, that's fun. Amen? And uh, you just, I want to be more like him. 
you know. Don't waste your time trying to defend yourself. Don't waste your time. He'll defend you. You just serve him, love him. Amen.